file. File means again, it's a very simple model, right? We are placing this and uh, uh, it is, the pile is always resting on, on, on the hard strata. It's resting on hard strata and if, if we have a, a liquefaction condition, then the, the, as, as the, as there shouldn't be any problem, right? It will, you see, if it is not resting on hard strata, then the, it will penetrate. And again, now it is resting, resting on hard strata, resting on hard strata. So now there is no settlement, right? So this is the case of pile foundation. So this is the simple experiments we have, we have, we have actually uh, uh, came up with and we try to find out, uh, right? So, uh, these are the case of liquefaction uh, we, we like to understand. And now we go to the, uh, we uh, one more model we have developed, which is uh, known as a uh, model of ductile deterring because you see, uh, yeah, during the earthquake, we have seen uh, lots of failure because of the poor detailing, right? We will see this, right? Now here you can see uh, the spalling of the concrete, which has taken place here, right? So you can you can see this right. Uh, yeah, you can see this here. Uh, this is the beam bars, right? There are insufficient confinement here. Then we will observe the damage here, right? We are knowing that because of the reverse reverse of the stresses, uh, this will observe a, a, a high shear at the uh, support, and uh, this failure is observed. You can see these failures because of the insufficient insufficient uh, confinement right uh, uh, here you can see this is this is a uh, uh, closely spaced steel ups and therefore uh, uh, it is a little bit intact even though so so well, this is reasonably good transverse reinforcement uh, now this is this is this you can see here we are knowing that because of the lateral force lateral force you can ha you have a uh, these two points top and bottom of the column are highly stressed there we you get a, a maximum shear and moments right so uh, we will we'll see the failures at the either top or bottom or at the, both the places right such kind of failures we have seen during the uh, previous earthquakes right either at the top or bottom because we are knowing that because of the lateral force we have uh, maximum moment and shear at the top and bottom, right? So these are the classical failures because of the poor ductile, poor detailing. We are knowing that here we need a, a close confinement. Uh, okay, so confinement of, confinement of the concrete is required. So close steel are required here, but uh, we are not providing it and, and your structure is going to observe failure like this. You can see this, right? Because of uh, poor confinement in this region, right? This region again. And so these are the classical failures you can see, right? Classical failures because of the poor detailing of the reinforcement. Right? Here you can have a poor joint detailing, right? So uh, uh, we have to go for the ductile detailing when we are talking about the response of our structure during earthquake. If you have a good ductile detailing, then your structure is going to perform well. And uh, we will we will see damage, but I think such kind of uh, things we will not see, right? Uh, so uh, we we have a, a steer ups like this, uh, 135 degree pan, uh, right? You need a, a close steer ups at the at the at the support at top and bottom of the column, right? And this is the this is the reinforcement detailing given in the uh, uh, IS code IS 13920. This is the code of, code for ductile design, ductile design, right? This code of ductile design. Uh, earlier we have a code of ductile detailing in two, 1993, and then it was revised in 2016, and the India came up with a, a code of ductile design. Right. So, how to design your building uh, as for the detail, detailing, right? So, we are knowing that the here you need a closed steer ups, here you need a closed steer ups, 
right? And uh, these are the highly stressed zone, top and bottom of the column. So no lapping is allowed. No lapping is allowed at top and bottom of the column. Where lapping is allowed? Lapping is allowed in the middle third. Lapping is allowed in the middle third, right? And only 50% bars are lapped at one place, right? So if you're lapping here 50%, then lapping will be 50% on this side. That is to be required, right? So this is very important. And the another important thing is this beam bars must have encouraged into the column, right? So you, you understand this because when your system is vibrating, this bar will try to come out. But if it is well anchored, then beam and column will work as a monolithic uh, or as a as a one element. So you have a good connectivity between them, right? So these are the requirements. Then you also need you also need uh, uh, confinement in the joint also because this joint is is heavily stressed. So you need a confinement there also. There also. When the foundation starts, you need a confinement in this particular portion because again the higher moment is going to induce there, right? So the uh, IS four five six two thousand uh, and IS one three nine two zero. IS four five six is for the normal design. No detail detailing is discussed in IS four five six. So uh, when you, you want to go for detail detailing, you have to provide uh, provision of IS one three nine two zero. Over and above IS four five six, right? So here we talk about the confinement details at the various locations of beam column, anchored length, beam column joint details, details of shear stirrups and lapping of the bars. These are the important points you have to keep in mind, right? And then we have developed, we have a developed a model, and it will exhibit everything, right? This is very important. You can see here this is a closed stirrups. Uh, at the bottom you have closed stirrups, and in the middle, the middle part. So in the middle part, you are lapping half here, you are ha lapping half here. So you can understand through this reinforcement that how the ductile drilling is provided, right? So this is very important for us. Now, these models are exhibited in 2011 uh, International Conference, uh, which is organized uh, in Gujarat. And uh, almost uh, um, people from uh, 40 countries were, were there to attend this conference. And I think uh, these models, uh, all models are displayed there. And uh, I think we, we get uh, uh, very good feedback. Again, I'm saying the closed stirrups here, uh, closed stirrups here. We have a lapping 50% here or 50% on this side. So lapping is only provided in the middle third, right? Uh, in, if you look at this joint, then the, the, again, the, in the joint, joint reinforcement will be there. Uh, here, joint enforcement will be there, right? Here, again, you have a closed um, stirrups. So uh, from this, you can understand, right, how to provide. So we have provided uh, uh, two types of reinforcement as per IS-456 and as per IS-13920. Right? And from that, you can understand this part, right? So basically, uh, conclusion is the behavior of the simple structural configuration can be understood easily by these experiments. This is our... So we only want to understand structural behavior, right? And uh, you see, uh, we have not done only that. We have also captured all the responses and we, we try to compare with the theoretical one, software and the experimental results. So uh, once they get verified, we, I think uh, we get a confidence, right? So these are the references uh, we have used uh, when we have gone for this, right? So, um, this is the complete setup, and this is uh, definitely the acknowledgement of all this. My guide, uh, Dr. Ajay Patil, uh, GSTMA, and Guj Cost officials, Prasen Patel, my students. These are all my students uh, who worked a lot, right? And uh, Ashok Bhai and Prabhul Bhai, and who are engaged in fabrications, right? So this lab was visited by many people. Is Dr. Murthy? Uh, Durgesh Rai, uh, they are keep on guiding us for all the time. And uh, I think uh, we are able to do uh, sufficiently well because of the guidance. Uh, in 2001 earthquake, the whole project was reviewed by uh, the CM, uh, Modi, sir, at that moment. And uh, uh, also 
uh, he has seen the soft today failure there so it was a little uh, you can understand that what is going to happen with open ground story structures so a lot of experts came came there and uh, i tell you that he is he is professor marshall professor marshall right uh, he worked a lot in the uh, work worked a lot for the traditional housing systems right and he has given a lot of input uh, uh these are the uh actually from the japan here you can see uh dr svetana breze he, 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 he has also attended the uh the conference he is a uh, dr sudhir jain he is uh, uh, considered to be the one of the pioneer uh, in the uh, subject of architectural engineering he has done a lot of research we have learned a lot from dr sudhir jain dr murthy Dr. Setana Brase and many other Dr. Durgesh Rai and many other, right? Uh, this is the uh, photograph when uh, Dr. Setana Brase and uh, Marshall they have visited our lab. So the uh, this, she is Marjorie Green. She has visited the lab and gave, gave us a lot of input, right? And uh, we have we have uh, improved our lab. Uh, a lot because of the guidance right so uh, thank you very much uh, for your patient hearing and uh, if you have any questions you can ask please if you have any question you can ask please Participants, do you have any questions? Yes, do you have a question? I want to show you some more videos. Yeah. Uh, any questions? Participants? Uh, Okay. Uh, uh, Chintan is there? Brother Siddhi Patel? Aditya? Okay. Uh, I, will, I will show you some video. I am sharing my screen. Sharing my screen. So my screen is visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So you see, yeah, in, in the laboratory, uh, uh, the many ME students have worked on uh, traditional housing systems. Uh, they have they have carried out the testing on Adobe constructions, uh, Adobe construction, right? So uh, how how your uh, 
uh, structure will behave you can see uh, you can see this uh, yeah now uh, basically this is a this is the adobe brick uh, which is made uh, in the real structure we have a bigger size of bricks and, uh, and uh, this is made up from the rammed earth and uh, here the openings are provided right and here no other other feature is provided right so what will happen to this structure you can understand right it is performed on the shake table and uh, a heavy mass is placed at the top right heavy mass is placed at the top and the shaking is uh, So frequency, if you increase the frequency, what will happen? If you increase the frequency, you just see a uh, lot of damage is observed, right? For the small shaking, I think we, we have this, this type of failure, right? Now, You see the failure is around the around the openings, right? You go for the second one. Okay, you can see this is the uh, this is uh, uh, X cracking you have around the opening. We are knowing that if you if we have opening, then the area is reduced. If area is reduced, then stress will be concentrated. And the the when the stress will concentrate, uh, if your material is not able to take the stress, then this crack or this damage is going to happen. And this is known as a shear failure, right? And shear failure, how it is going to take in place? You can see here, this is the X cracking, right? Again, I'm saying this is the X cracking. This, this, right? Okay. Now you can see. Uh, if you test it further, what what will happen to to the structure? Uh, this this experiment now now you can see this you can see this right? These are the these are the classical failures right? The X bracing now there are no no uh, additional feature provided any additional feature to this machinery right and you, you can see what will happen to this right so uh, this this type of uh, unenforced machinery is very dangerous and uh, if you don't provide uh, earthquake resistant feature then it fails suddenly and and lot more casualty had been observed in past So most important thing is students are learning something out of it, right? This is very important. When students see such kind of failures, then uh, they will believe that th this type of system is not good. And in future, they are not going to implement this thing when they practice in a real sense. Right? So again, this X type of cracking, the shear failure has taken place. And if you still start doing the experiment, what will happen? You, you see, this is here you have a poor masonry work, poor masonry work at the other joint. I'm talking about this, a very poor masonry work, a joint, at joint you, you must have a good masonry work. Here, this masonry work is very poor and because of that it fails, right? We'll see one more video, yeah, right? Now just look at this. No, no, no uh, earthquake resistant feature. What is happening? What is happening? The openings, openings, the the masonry around the openings are highly stressed because of the reduction in the area of that particular wall, and the failure had been observed, right? So these are the shear failures.
Now, again, observe this. Okay. So here we we apply different frequencies, number of cycles, right? So displacements are are also changing. So we are keep on changing the frequency displacement, and we we try to observe the response. Over oh, thirty five kg weight is placed at the top. Now the high frequency displacement is fifteen mm. Again, if it is increased, you see it. Now the question is now. Uh, you see, this is a, a low-rise building. So low-rise building is having the high frequency, right? Remember, high frequency. It means the response of this type of construction will be built up when the high frequency earthquake will come. Low frequency earthquake, it will not going to exhibit more response, but but the high frequency it will exhibit a higher response. We'll see. So this is a low-rise building having the high frequency, and now we are keep on increasing the frequency. This is the work of Nikhil Poria, who did the masters at LD College of Engineering under the guidance of Professor Siddi Patel. So again, we are we are keep on increasing frequency because we are knowing that this is having the higher frequency. Uh, the model is having higher frequency, so we try to reach to that level. We want to put structure in a resonance condition. Now look at this, right? What is happening? What is happening? And in high frequency, this is this uh, a sliding taken place, right? At the different sections. Look at again. I'm saying that in the real life, we are not happy when collapse is taken place, but in the laboratory. We we are learning many things, and from this we learn a lot. And uh, you see, this is a out of plane failure, right? Out of plane failure is taken place, and here we have a band is provided, right? So it sustained damage at, up to certain level, but out of plane failure again, it is always there because it is a weak wall, and if it fails, then it affects the other part of the structure also, right? You have to give justification to each and every damage you are observing. Again, you you will see the here yeah, again. Uh, uh, a little level and sea level it is provided uh, band and. Uh, Now look at this, right? This is a particular point, which is very important. You have to understand this part, right? What is happening? That here at the band level, you are providing the band here. You you are providing the band here, and this uh, uh, this portion was lifted, so 
so basically you you have you have uh, original band as this machinery is not connected in a vertical direction vertical direction so uh, what is happening this the the band which is provided is separated this wall in in three pieces and it is separated when it try to overturn right so this is observed during the just look at again right okay so you have to understand the behavior we, we we don't need only the horizontal bands we need vertical bands also uh, vertical reinforcement also sorry now this is the done by the another student and again the the brick machinery is provided the clay brick now you would understand that this 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 wall and the on the wall on the opposite side both are uh, having the out, may, may have outer plane failure while these two walls are taking most of the earthquake forces we are increasing the frequency because we are knowing the frequency of this structure is high so we are keep on increasing frequency and to reach to the uh, the frequency level of the structure all the sensors are placed sensor are sensing acceleration we can also share you the papers uh, which is uh, written by nikhil poria and prof sri patel now you can see you can see this is a, again the original bands are provided so again it creates a, a, a plane of weakness in in horizontal direction uh, and from that it is failing right again you see at at this particular point where the original bands are placed they are in the sliding shear had been observed and failed at that particular Uh, with this sectable you can apply random motion also right now harmonic motion is applied because we want to build up the response of this structure you 
We are increasing the frequency. Yes. Again, you can see no no machinery features is provided, and we can see the different types of failures. And because of the uplifting, the out of plane uh, wall is observing different types of damage, and the in plane walls having a shear shear failures, right? Mm -hmm. So we are using the word in plane walls and out of plane walls. So this is out of plane and this is in plane, right? So opening is provided. So definitely opening will make your structure weak. So you have to take enough care of the opening. Now you can see the failure that will be quite predictable. Now, uh, horizontal earthquake bands are provided, and we'll see. Now, we, um, higher frequency testing is taken place. Now, this is another video. Uh, right, there is a, a vertical containment reinforcement provided along with the horizontal bands. Right now, you can see this is a vertical co containment reinforcement. It, it, it is in form of a wire. Right, because we are knowing that when you provide original band, your structure is going to perform well. But you 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 may have a sliding failure at that particular level because you are creating that plane. Uh, of weakness and now we are also integrating the bricks in the vertical direction by providing the containment reinforcement so uh, your structure is going to absorb damage but it will offer more resistance which is more important during the earthquake you'll see this what will happen we're increasing the frequency right the frequency is increased and now you can see uh, the previous structure was damp, uh, almost collapsed at this particular frequency, right? 25 hertz frequency, it was collapsed. Now we are going for the higher frequency and still your structure is intact. So this is definitely uh, advantageous, right? You can see this now uh, for the higher frequency, for the higher energy input, it start failing. But because of the containment, you can see still it is master is intact. In the earlier case, uh, there was a sliding failure and the whole structure failed uh, suddenly, right? So you need a reinforcement in the vertical direction to take the tension which is created because of the uh, little movement of your structure during earthquake, right? You, you see, there is a sliding failure all taken place, but even though because of the containment enforcement, the collapse is prevented, right? These are the small addition to our structural system and the performance is enhanced.
once this containment reinforcement is affected then the integrity of your structure may be affected and you may observe collapse even right so we will see that you see the the master units are coming out but your structure is not collapsing the reason is containment reinforcement right there is a uh, there is integrity in the vertical direction right this is very important so you have to understand the import of the containment reinforcement around the opening it fails because you can see this containment reinforcement gets get damaged and it collapses at taken place uh, we are always testing up to the failures so but we are not putting any sensors during that otherwise our sensor get damaged so we don't get data and the failures but i think we have to observe the failures here to understand the role of each and every um, features of earthquake resistance now you can see it will fail right still you can you can see it it takes lot of lot of more uh, earthquake energy and uh, before failure it gives you a lot of warning right you can come out of your building uh, in the previous building it is possible that you may not come out of your building but here it gives enough time to come out of your building it is the same video yes it is the same video sorry again high frequency testing again you see your structure is not failing suddenly even it is a masonry structure because of the containment reinforcement so when the containment reinforcement is affected definitely it it here it is it came out so uh, it also hampers the performance of your building again you see lot of resistance and then it will fail definitely it will fail right but again it will give you ample time for the uh, come out of the building and now it will go right so uh, here i stop my presentation and uh, if you have any question you can ask please uh i think we have uh the officials from the gyan office from iit kadakpur uh sir do you want to interact with us Uh, any questions am i audible yes sir yes sir you are uh, completely audible and uh, i guess there are no questions from the end of participants okay so 
we can end the session if you say yeah okay uh before we end again i'm requesting uh official from the gyan office from iit kadakur uh if you want to interact please sir okay aditya we'll end the session here if there are no questions okay okay sir thank you so much once again for such great session uh, i know how how difficult this could have been for the participants in especially in the post lunch session but you have kept it so engaging and active using the video shows and all sorts of uh, information actively deliver, uh, delivered so thanks a lot sir for this wonderful session once again and uh, so this would be the end of the fourth day and we will in no time we have now reached to the final day of this stdp so i request all the participants to join on time tomorrow for the fifth and final day of this yarn sponsored five days stdp we will be beginning yeah, our final day tomorrow with the session from Dr. Swetlana Brzeu, ma'am, who will be discussing on the performance of confined machinery buildings in past earthquake scenarios, post earthquake scenarios. The I beg your pardon. So the link will be shared in the WhatsApp group as usual. So this will be the end of today. Thank you all yeah, the participants. Thank you, sir, for Aditya, the session. Aditya, 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 and uh, 